12 Haunting Facts About the Titanic The tragic narrative of the Titanic remains as one of history's most notorious maritime disasters. In April 1912, the vessel embarked on its maiden voyage, carrying over 2,200 individuals. Heartbreakingly, only 706 of those passengers would ultimately survive the calamity. For nearly eight decades, the RMS Titanic, along with all its contents, rested undisturbed at the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. It wasn't until underwater excavation teams undertook the task of retrieving artifacts from the shipwreck that a window into life aboard the colossal vessel and the enduring specters of the ill-fated voyage began to emerge. Today, we invite you to explore 12 haunting facts about the Titanic. Insufficient lifeboats were available, yet not even the ones on hand were fully utilized. Under Smith's command, the Titanic embarked on its maiden voyage from Southampton, England, to New York City on April 10, 1912. The ship was hailed as a marvel of modern engineering, the largest and most luxurious vessel of its time. However, the tragedy that would later unfold would forever tarnish Smith's legacy. The Titanic's fatal encounter with an iceberg on April 14, 1912, was the result of a series of errors and misjudgments, including the ship's speed and course. One of the most glaring mistakes was the inadequate number of lifeboats on board. The Titanic, designed with great confidence in its supposed unsinkability, was equipped with just 18 lifeboats, each with a capacity of 65 people. This meant that, in theory, only 1,070 passengers and crew could be accommodated in lifeboats, far short of the ship's total population of 3,457 people. To compound the dire situation, Captain Edward Smith made a critical decision during the evacuation process. He allowed some lifeboats to depart while they were not fully loaded, believing that the ship's structural integrity would hold long enough for the arrival of rescue ships. This decision would prove disastrous. For instance, a lifeboat with a capacity of 65 people left the ship with only 27 passengers on board, wasting precious seats that could have saved lives. As the Titanic sank beneath the frigid waters of the North Atlantic, Captain Smith exhibited courage and responsibility, doing his best to manage the chaotic evacuation and maintain order among the passengers and crew. Tragically, he went down with his ship, perishing in the disaster along with over 1,500 others. Fourteen years prior, a book foretold the tragedy of the Titanic. Morgan Robertson, the author of The Wreck of the Titan, was a writer whose life took an intriguing turn due to the uncanny similarities between his work of fiction and the tragic sinking of the Titanic. In 1898, 14 years before the infamous Titanic disaster of 1912, Robertson penned a novella titled The Wreck of the Titan. The eerie parallels between his fictional work and the real-life tragedy are what would ultimately define his legacy. The Wreck of the Titan detailed the ill-fated voyage of a fictional ocean liner called the Titan. In the story, the Titan met its demise after striking an iceberg in the month of April, just like the Titanic. The narrative unfolded tragically, with a massive loss of life attributed to a severe shortage of lifeboats, mirroring the grim reality of the Titanic disaster. Remarkably, the similarities extended to specific details, such as the size, speed, and equipment of the ships. The Titan, in the novel, was 244 meters long, while the Titanic, in reality, measured 269 meters. These striking parallels led many to ascribe Morgan Robertson with an almost mystical ability, suggesting that he possessed precognition or clairvoyance. However, Robertson himself vehemently denied any supernatural foresight, emphasizing that his work was purely a product of his imagination and an extrapolation of the technological trends and challenges of his time. Despite his protests, the uncanny similarities between The Wreck of the Titan and the Titanic Disaster have made Morgan Robertson a figure of intrigue and fascination in the realm of literary coincidences. His work continues to be studied and discussed as a remarkable instance of life imitating art, albeit in a profoundly tragic manner. 
The courageous musicians performed melodies in an attempt to soothe the distressed passengers. The story of the 14 musicians aboard the ill-fated RMS Titanic is one of remarkable bravery and selflessness in the face of impending disaster. These talented individuals, Theodore Braley, Roger Bricoux, John Clarke, Wallace Hartley, John Woodward, Percy Taylor, John Hume, and Georges Krins, would forever be remembered as heroes for their actions on that dreadful night in April 1912. Amid the chaos and panic that ensued as the Titanic began to sink into the icy waters of the North Atlantic, these 14 musicians played a pivotal role in trying to calm the terrified passengers. They understood the gravity of the situation and the limited number of lifeboats available for evacuation. Rather than seeking their own safety, they chose to stay behind and use their musical talents to provide solace and comfort to those on board. With legendary vigor, they continued to play their instruments, creating a calming and defiant atmosphere amidst the chaos. Their music served as a powerful source of reassurance and distraction for the passengers, many of whom were grappling with the horrifying reality of the sinking ship. One survivor of the tragedy later remarked, Many brave things were done that night, but none was more brave than those done by men playing minute after minute as the ship settled quietly lower and lower into the sea. This quote beautifully encapsulates the courage and selflessness displayed by these musicians in their final moments. Tragically, none of the 14 musicians survived the sinking of the Titanic. They perished along with more than 1,500 others in one of the most devastating maritime disasters in history. The Daily Mail made an incorrect report. The Daily Mail, a prominent London-based newspaper, played a significant role in disseminating information about the sinking of the Titanic, which remains one of the most tragic maritime disasters in history. However, their initial reporting of the event left much to be desired causing confusion and disbelief among readers. It is perplexing and somewhat astonishing that the Daily Mail's initial report failed to accurately reflect the gravity of the situation. Instead of reporting the catastrophic loss of life and the tremendous tragedy that had unfolded, their early accounts painted a misleadingly optimistic picture. They declared that there were no deaths and that the rescue efforts had been entirely successful. The question of how the Daily Mail managed to remain oblivious to the utter disaster is one that has puzzled historians and readers alike. It's possible that in the early stages of receiving information about the event, the newspaper relied on incomplete or inaccurate reports. In the chaos and confusion that followed the Titanic sinking, communication was challenging, and facts were often scarce and fragmented. Additionally, there may have been a desire, at least initially, to downplay the extent of the tragedy, perhaps in an attempt to mitigate panic or to project a sense of control and competence. In the early 20th century, newspapers were known to engage in sensationalism and sometimes manipulate the facts to shape public perception. However, as more accurate and comprehensive information about the Titanic disaster emerged, the Daily Mail, like other newspapers, eventually reported the full extent of the tragedy. The loss of over 1,500 lives was a heartbreaking and somber reality that could not be concealed or minimized. The sole survivor of the Titanic from Japan faced animosity in his homeland for having survived the tragedy. Masabumi Hosono, a diligent and dedicated member of the Japanese Transport Ministry, embarked on a fateful journey aboard the RMS Titanic with the simple intention of returning to his homeland after a business trip in Russia. His voyage began like that of many others, unaware of the impending disaster that would unfold. The ill-fated collision of the Titanic with an iceberg changed everything. As the ship descended into chaos and the grim reality of the situation became apparent, Masabumi Hosono, like so many others on board, harbored doubts about his chances of survival. In a poignant and heart-wrenching moment, he decided to pen a letter to his beloved wife, an attempt to capture his final thoughts and emotions in the face of impending tragedy. Fate. However, had a twist in store for Masabumi, near B, 
A spare space on a lifeboat materialized, and he managed to secure a place on it. This fortunate turn of events spared him from the frigid waters of the North Atlantic, in stark contrast to the tragic fate of so many others who perished that fateful night. Upon his return to Japan, Masabumi Hosono found himself thrust into the spotlight due to his remarkable survival. Being the only Japanese passenger on the Titanic at the time, he became the subject of considerable media attention and briefly achieved a status akin to that of a minor celebrity. His story symbolized the unpredictability of life and the capricious nature of destiny. However, this newfound fame was short-lived, and a dramatic turn of events occurred across the ocean in the United States. Archibald Gracie, a first-class passenger who survived the Titanic disaster, penned a scathing commentary that falsely accused Masabumi of being a stowaway. This unfounded accusation sought to tarnish Masabumi's character and reputation. Tragically, Gracie's commentary found its way to Japan, where it had a devastating impact. In a society with a strong focus on honor and self-sacrifice, public sentiment turned harshly against Masabumi. Many newspapers and individuals in Japan began to denounce him, portraying him as a coward who had prioritized his own survival over helping others in their dire time of need. The prevailing sentiment was that he should have willingly sacrificed himself to aid fellow passengers. The weight of these societal judgments took a significant toll on Masabumi's life. He lost his job as a result of the public backlash, despite eventually managing to reclaim it. The stigma and resentment surrounding him lingered, and he continued to face animosity and scorn from some quarters until his death in 1939. The ship's baker managed to endure the icy cold temperatures by consuming copious amounts of whiskey. Charles Jugan, the ship's baker on the RMS Titanic, emerged as a figure of remarkable resilience and endurance during the tragic sinking of the ship in April 1912. His story would become one of the most intriguing tales of survival from that ill-fated voyage. Charles Jochen's role as the ship's baker placed him in a unique position among the crew. He was responsible for preparing bread and pastries for the passengers and crew, a role that would prove crucial in the dire hours that followed. When the Titanic struck an iceberg and began its descent into the icy waters of the North Atlantic, the immediate threat to passengers and crew was not just the collision itself, but also the frigid conditions of the sea. Hypothermia, the lowering of the body's core temperature to dangerous levels, became the main factor contributing to the loss of life. In a remarkable display of resourcefulness, and perhaps aided by his knowledge of the ship's provisions, Charles Jugin claimed that he was able to ward off the effects of hypothermia by consuming copious amounts of whiskey. It was said that he consumed obscene quantities of the alcoholic beverage as a means of insulating himself against the numbing cold. Furthermore, Jochen demonstrated extraordinary physical endurance by treading water in the bone-chilling, minus 2.2 degrees Celsius, 28 degrees Fahrenheit, sea for an astounding two hours. This act of resilience allowed him to remain afloat amidst the icy waves as the Titanic slowly sank beneath him. Incredibly, the only discernible physical consequence of his ordeal was swollen feet. Despite enduring such extreme conditions, Charles Jugan did not require medical attention after being rescued. Wealthy millionaire Benjamin Guggenheim permitted other passengers to occupy his place on the lifeboats. Benjamin Guggenheim, an American businessman, was one of the wealthiest passengers aboard the RMS Titanic, and his response to the ship's tragic fate left an indelible mark on the collective memory of the disaster. When news of the Titanic's collision with an iceberg reached Benjamin Guggenheim and his valet, Victor Gelio, they reacted with a surprising level of nonchalance. To them, it seemed like a minor inconvenience rather than a life-threatening situation. Their initial response was to allow other passengers to take their places on the lifeboats, displaying a selfless and perhaps overly optimistic outlook on the unfolding crisis. As the grim reality of the situation became increasingly apparent, Guggenheim and Giglio found themselves without a care in the world about their own survival. 
Rather than panicking or desperately seeking a lifeboat, they chose to embrace their fate with remarkable dignity. They dressed in their finest attire as if preparing for a formal event and settled into deck chairs on the sinking ship. There, with cigars in hand, they watched as the world around them descended into chaos and disaster. Witnesses on board recalled Benjamin Guggenheim's words, encapsulating his unwavering composure. We are all dressed up and prepared to go down like gentlemen. This sentiment underscored his acceptance of the inevitable and his refusal to succumb to panic or fear. The sight of Guggenheim and Giglio calmly sitting on deck chairs, enjoying cigars as the Titanic slipped beneath the icy waters of the North Atlantic, left a profound impression on those who observed it. Their dignified and composed demeanor amid the chaos earned them admiration not only from eyewitnesses, but from people around the world who heard their story. Similarly, another passenger with a similar fate was Jacob Astor, a prominent American millionaire. After ensuring the safety of his pregnant wife, Madeline, by helping her onto a lifeboat, he was about to follow suit. However, he spotted two drenched passengers in need behind him and, in a selfless act, allowed them to take his place in the lifeboat. This noble gesture sealed his own fate. Jacob Astor, like Benjamin Guggenheim, was last seen in a moment of tranquility enjoying a smoke as the Titanic sank beneath the waves. Spirits remove portraits. From the wall, J. Bruce. Ismay, one of the builders of the ill-fated RMS Titanic, has a controversial legacy deeply intertwined with the tragic events of that infamous night. His actions during the sinking of the ship have left a lasting impression on the collective memory of the disaster, and his reputation is marred by controversy. As one of the senior figures associated with the Titanic, J. Bruce Ismay's role was significant. It is widely believed that he made the fateful decision to have the ship increase its speed after receiving warnings of ice in the area. This decision has been a subject of debate and criticism, as it has been suggested that the Titanic might have averted disaster had it proceeded at a more cautious pace. However, perhaps the most damning aspect of Ismay's legacy is the perception that he abandoned ship and left women and children behind during the evacuation. Witnesses who survived on lifeboats claimed that Ismay kept his back to the sinking ship as it descended into the frigid waters of the North Atlantic. This perception of his actions has contributed to a lingering sense of disdain toward him. The Luxor exhibit dedicated to the Titanic includes a portrait of J. Bruce Ismay, which serves as a symbolic representation of his role in the disaster. It appears that even in the afterlife, the ghosts associated with the Titanic seem to harbor a strong dislike for him. One eerie incident at the exhibit added to the mystique surrounding J. Bruce Ismay. On an ordinary morning, as the exhibit's crew arrived to open it, they were met with a perplexing sight. The portrait of Ismay lay on the floor. Intrigued and concerned, the manager decided to review the surveillance footage from the previous night. What they witnessed on the video left them stunned. The footage seemed to depict the portrait of J. Bruce Ismay shaking and then inexplicably detaching itself from the wall, as if moved by unseen hands or forces. The occurrence suggested an otherworldly or supernatural presence associated with the portrait, hinting at a lingering sense of disapproval or unrest associated with Ismay's actions on that fateful night. Ghost Hunters recorded a voice on audio. The Georgia Aquarium, located in Atlanta, is renowned for its stunning marine life exhibits. However, it's not just the aquatic wonders that draw attention. The aquarium also houses a collection of potentially haunted artifacts from the ill-fated Titanic, which has given rise to reports of paranormal activity from its employees and visitors alike. Witnesses among the aquarium's staff have claimed to experience various eerie occurrences, including sightings of shadowy figures, unexplained voices, and even sensations of being touched by unseen entities. These encounters have been so frequent and unsettling that the paranormal investigators from the Sci-Fi Channel's Ghost Hunters decided to pay a visit to the Georgia Aquarium to investigate the phenomenon further. During their investigation, 
the Ghost Hunters team reportedly captured compelling evidence of the paranormal activity associated with the Titanic exhibit. In one instance, they recorded a chilling voice saying, No, please wait, within the exhibit's iceberg room. This voice, seemingly emanating from the beyond, added an eerie layer of intrigue to the already haunted atmosphere. In addition to the voice recording, the investigators reported readings of anomalous cold spots within the exhibit, consistent with the belief that spirits can cause fluctuations in temperature when they manifest. They also claimed to have witnessed a shadowy figure, further cementing their belief that there was something otherworldly happening within the Titanic exhibit. After carefully reviewing their findings, the Ghost Hunters team arrived at a haunting conclusion. The Titanic exhibit at the Georgia Aquarium was indeed haunted. This declaration has only added to the mystique and fascination surrounding the artifacts from the ill-fated ship. The idea that the spirits of those who perished aboard the Titanic might still be tied to their belongings, even across the seas and through time, lends an eerie and poignant dimension to the exhibit. Captain Smith's presence lingers in his former residence in England. The former home of Titanic Captain Edward John Smith, a picturesque 19th-century Victorian residence, has become a place steeped in eerie tales and reports of paranormal encounters, according to the current owners, Louise and Neil Bonner. Over the course of a decade, the Bonners have held stewardship of this historic property, and during their tenure it has gained a reputation as a place where the shipmaster's spirit may still linger. The haunting accounts that have emerged from the house are both chilling and captivating. Numerous tenants who have occupied the property have recounted unsettling experiences, painting a vivid portrait of a place touched by the other, worldly. Some have described feeling icy chills sweeping through them, even on the warmest of days, while others have reported hearing strange, unexplainable noises echoing through the rooms. Perhaps the most striking of all the reported phenomena are the apparitions of a full-bodied figure, unmistakably resembling Captain Edward John Smith himself. Tenants have claimed to have seen this spectral presence within the house, adding a layer of undeniable intrigue to the tales of haunting. The paranormal activity within the residence isn't confined to mere sightings and sensations. The house itself has borne witness to strange occurrences. The property endured an unexplained flood in the kitchen, an event that defied conventional explanations. Additionally, there have been reports of unusually cold gusts congregating in the dining room, despite there being no logical source for these temperature fluctuations. One particularly chilling incident stands out in the annals of the house's history. One of the tenants, living within its walls, reached out to the Bonners with an account that sent shivers down the spine. According to this tenant, while lying in bed, he was absolutely convinced that he had witnessed the ghostly presence of Captain Smith himself. He described the spectral figure as drifting across the room, a surreal and unforgettable experience that left a lasting impression on him. A lifeboat training session was abandoned on the day of the ship's sinking. The tragedy of the RMS Titanic's sinking is compounded by a haunting revelation that came to light on the fateful morning of its demise. This revelation pertains to a lifeboat training drill, a critical exercise that could have potentially saved hundreds of more lives that night, but was inexplicably canceled at the last minute. The cancellation of this drill, along with the subsequent lack of rescheduling or any further training, sheds light on the lax approach to safety that played a significant role in the disaster. Captain Edward J. Smith, the commanding officer of the Titanic, made the fateful decision to cancel what could have been an invaluable lifeboat training session for the crew. This training could have prepared them for the efficient and orderly deployment of lifeboats, ensuring that more passengers could have been safely evacuated from the sinking ship. However, this crucial exercise was not just canceled. It was never rescheduled or carried out during the four days that the Titanic was at sea. The cancellation of the lifeboat drill is a chilling example of the overconfidence that surrounded the Titanic. 
The ship was widely regarded as the grandest and most luxurious vessel in the world, and extensive preparations had gone into its interior designs and finishing touches. However, this focus on aesthetics and opulence left the crew with very little time to adequately prepare for the practical aspects of the voyage, including crucial safety procedures. When the Titanic's lifeboats were finally dropped overboard on the night of the sinking, it marked the first time the crew had ever manned them. This lack of prior experience and training significantly hindered the crew's ability to efficiently launch and fill the lifeboats, contributing to the tragic loss of life. One of the Titanic's four funnels was purely decorative and resulted in fatal crush injuries. The tragic sinking of the RMS Titanic revealed not only a series of unfortunate events, but also a critical design flaw that played a significant role in the disaster. Beyond the slow reaction time of the crew in spotting the iceberg, another fatal flaw that contributed to the catastrophe stemmed from the ship's grandiose design. The Titanic, at the time of its maiden voyage, stood as the epitome of luxury and opulence. With the most expensive first-class ticket to New York costing an astounding $4,350, equivalent to nearly $70,000 in today's currency, expectations for this remarkable vessel were sky-high. The ship's designers spared no expense in making the Titanic a marvel to behold. However, the fatal mistake lay in the ship's design choices, particularly in one feature that was added purely for spectacle rather than function. The Titanic boasted four iconic cream and black-tipped funnels, which became a distinctive and impressive feature of the vessel. However, a shocking revelation came to light. Only three of these four funnels were operational, serving a crucial purpose in ventilating the ship's boilers and expelling smoke. The fourth funnel, painted to resemble the others, was purely ornamental. It had no functional role in the ship's operation and was added solely for aesthetic symmetry. While this might have been done to enhance the ship's visual appeal, it had dire consequences. When the Titanic struck the iceberg and ultimately began to sink, the ship's catastrophic breakup was accompanied by chaos and turmoil. In this tumultuous event, the non-functional fourth funnel, despite serving no practical purpose, remained in place. Tragically, it became a deadly hazard as the ship disintegrated. Many passengers and crew members were crushed by the falling funnels as the Titanic broke apart, turning what was meant to be a purely decorative feature into a lethal threat. What do you think about these 12 scary facts about the Titanic? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.